All right, you're on. Hi, guys. We are here with your Bible reading. Hope you guys are having a good day. If you hear any loud bangs or anything, it's our upstairs neighbor. Doing that. Started banging as soon as we started the video. Okay. Today we're going to be reading, well, we'll be reading in the New International Version, unless I am asked otherwise. And because somebody had asked me to read in the New International Version. So that's why I am, in case you guys are wondering. Because I usually, myself and my Bible, read the King James Version. Alright, so... We're going to be reading 2 Corinthians chapter 12 today, verses 1 through 10. Paul's vision and his throne. You're like, what do you mean, Paul's throne? How does Paul have a throne? Um, we'll see today. And then it'll be Paul. Paul will be the one talking again. Our psalm today will be Psalm 55. And we will be reading saying eight of the 30 sayings of the wise in Proverbs today. Mm-hmm, that's the one that I seen. Did you get two? Oh, okay, got it. You said goodbye. Yeah, I forgot. That'll be plenty. All right, guys, so let's begin. I must go on boasting. Although there is nothing to be gained, I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in body or out of body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things, things that no one is permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a throne in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in my weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I'm sure a lot of you have heard that saying before. When I am weak, I am strong. You know where it came from now. Second Corinthians, Paul. All right, guys, and that's where we're going to stop with 2 Corinthians today. Stomach's acting up today. It hurts really bad. All right, Psalm 55. For the director of music with stringed instruments, a mascal of David. It's a little longer psalm than we've been used to reading here lately. It's got 23 verses. And you know all the psalms of David are so beautiful. I think so. Who agrees with me? Give the video a thumbs up if you agree. David's psalms are beautiful. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me, and I am distraught. 
because of what my enemy is saying, because of the threats of the wicked, for they bring down suffering on me and assail me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter, far from the tempest and storm. Lord, confuse the wicked, confound their words, for I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they prowl about on its walls. Malice and abuse are within it. Destructive forces are at work in the city. Threats and lies never leave its streets. If an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were rising against me, I could hide. But it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship at the house of God as we walked about among the worshipers. Let death take my enemies by surprise. Let them go down alive to the realm of the dead, for evil finds lodging among them. As for me, I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning, and noon I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. He rescues me unharmed from the battle waged against me. Even though many oppose me, God who is enthroned from of old, who does not change, he will hear them and humble them because they have no fear of God. My companion attacks his friends. He violates his covenant. His talk is smooth as butter, yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they are drawn swords. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. But you, God, will bring down the wicked into the pit of decay. The bloodthirsty and deceitful will not live out half their days. But as for me, I trust in you. And that was Psalm 55. Another beautiful Psalm of David. For the director of music was Stringed Instruments, a Maskell of David. And now our Proverbs, saying eight of the 30 sayings of the wise, which is Proverbs chapter 23, verses four and five. Do not wear yourself out to get rich. Do not trust your own cleverness. Cast but a glance at riches, and they are gone. For they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. Money don't last. You can't take it with you. So don't make money what your life is all about in this world. Sure, money may take care of you in this world and make people grovel around you and treat you like a king, do what you say. Anybody with money, you know, can get what they want here on this earth, but that money's not going to help your soul. And your soul is eternal. Your body is not. Your body will see decay no matter how rich you are. greatest thing you can do is bring Jesus into your life and do the work Jesus wants you to do. Bring others to Jesus. Bring those souls to Jesus. And then your soul will be truly rich.
Alright guys, so that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. Ow. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Please pray for the people in Florida, Texas, and all the ones getting affected by this hurricane. Storms are supposed to be hitting Georgia soon, if they're not already, and we're supposed to get storms too, but um, 60 mile an hour winds, I think, here. I'm not sure when, what day it's going to get here, but we'll probably lose power, but it's nothing compared to, you know, what's going on in Florida and Texas and what those people are going through. So please keep them in, all in your prayers. And please keep Heather Edwards in your prayers. She's the one suffering with leukemia and everything else that's wrong with her. Everything's just... She's really very, very sick. And you know, she's got two young kids and they're not babies, but they're still young. They're not adults. And um, they're gonna be having a benefit for her soon. They're collecting new, new stuff for donations. And of course, you could always donate money or wherever, but I'm not sure who's taking it or where it's gonna be. But if I find out, I will let you guys know in case you want to send her something. Cards would also be appreciated. She's at the James Cancer Hospital. Her name is Heather Edwards. Alright guys, I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Please pray for April and Linda Thacker and Sherman Crabtree. They are all sick. Chronic illnesses and other stuff going on right now. So they need a lot of prayer. Bye, guys. God bless.